So human exposure via the environment includes consumption of treated crops, which is a, a key pathway for co-formulants and for active substance was really used in, this, in these situations. Um, however, the residue measurements that are used to determine the MRLs, maximum residue levels, under 91414, are specific to the active substance in most cases. Um, and therefore, really, the risk assessment is based upon the active substance only. Therefore, our conclusion is that this pathway and the general exposure to humans via the environment through whatever pathways that might exist um, is not really covered under 91414. And therefore, we concluded that a methodology is required for these co-formulants. Similarly, in the case of secondary poisoning to predators via the food chain, the, bio the bioaccumulation in the food chain will be dependent upon the substance rather than the formulation properties. And again, therefore, the active substance, uh, the assessments under 91414 are specific to the active substance. And therefore, where relevant under REACH, where required, then uh, a methodology uh, for secondary poisoning is really required. So, this is the summary of our findings with regard to the applicability of the 91414 assessment scheme. Um, in the case of direct emission to soil, we uh, believe that co formulants are covered under 91414, and as a result, we have proposed a waiver approach for this. Similarly, the same applies for surface water, and again, we have incorporated surface water exposure into the waiver. In the case of emissions to air and groundwater, as well as exposure to humans via the environment and exposure to predators via the food chain, then it was clear that some kind of approach was required. Um, and as I've said before, note that the emissions to air and groundwater are actually only assessed as part of the human exposure via the environment under REACH and aren't specific assessments in their own right. So the next step was um, to consider how this could be done, how we could consider approaches for these, these, end uh, for these pathways, um, and we had to stop and think what data will be available. But we assumed that, that the manufacturer and importer will have to fulfill the minimum data <coughs> requirements um, physicochemical properties, environmental fate, ecotoxicity um, to determine PNEX um, and uh, DNLs um, for the hazard assessment. Um, and we felt that it would be, it must be feasible to use any kind of approach that would be determined within, without the use of any additional data. So, the other thing we were asked to do was to look at what uh, other industry have developed. Um, and I guess the key uh, industry approach here really is the, the targeted risk assessment tool that's been developed by ESITOC. Um, and essentially this integrates the spreadsheet version in, <coughs> sorry, I was just going to talk about the TRA from the point of view of the environment, really, and humans exposed by the environment, not, not talking about um, the human operator exposure tools, etc. But with regard to the environment, uh, effectively the tool integrates the spreadsheet version of the EU technical guidance document slash e-uses calculations. Um, and what it does is it implements the environmental release category approach that is described in ECHA R16 guidance um, to enable uh, calculations according to the way that um, ECHA require. Um, in addition, some industry associations have developed industry-specific ERCs called SPERCs. I'll come on to describe what these mean later. Um, but SPERCs are a kind of a tier 1 plus or a tier 1.5. Um, and then the TRA also gives you the option 
to use it for a tier two assessment where you carry out an assessment based upon more specific situations like commission scenario documents, et cetera. <coughs> Moving on, other industry approaches. Some industry, uh, or some companies are preferring to use e-uses. Again, this is a standard tool and effectively is the same calculations as the SETOC TRA. Um, the only thing is here, if you use the current version of e-uses, you have to manually add in your ERCs and SPERCs. Um, it also doesn't give you a batch run mode. Um, so it's less user-friendly than the TRA, really. Um, and it's caught, of course, as Volker mentioned earlier, um, ECHA are developing the chemical safety assessment and reporting tool, CHESAR, or SHIZAR, I've heard somebody call it. I don't think it's magic. Some people are hoping it is. Um, this is an IEUCLID 5 plugin. Uh, and it, it, I'd, it, the intention is that it's going to automate the risk assessments and the production of the CSR. Um, it incorporates the e uses, I believe, um, and then also includes ERCs and allows users to define SPERCs. So they take existing SPERCs and plug them in. And if anybody wants to look further, the beta version is now available, and there's a link there. Okay, so I've mentioned ERCs and SPERCs. Um, so what are these things? Well, ERCs are environmental release categories. And these define two basic things, really. They define the emission fractions to environmental compartments, those being wastewater, air, and soil for specific uses or broad uses. Um, and um, they also provide you with parameters that can be used to calculate the amount of substance that is used per sewage treatment plant catchment per day. Now already you, see, you can see there that the, the, uh, the ECHA uh, guidance and approach is very much leaning towards and is built around sewage treatment plants and wastewater. This is really the key driver and the key way that the, the exposure calculations are constructed, which is something to bear in mind when we start to talk about crop protection products. Um, so each ERC covers a wide range of uses. They've got some broad descriptions, um, and as a result, ERCs are rather conservative because they have to cover such a wide range of uses. Um, they generally take a worst case um, value with regard to emissions to wastewater or air or soil. Now SPERCs are the uh, specific ERC um, developed by industries um, and these are refined ERCs and they are developed by taking account of much more specific information relating to specific uses of substances. Um, and a library of SPERCs is now um, coordinated, is being developed and coordinated by CEPIC. So, this is the end of the phase one. Um, and the conclusion that we came to was that the intention is that 91414 assessment scheme covers the potential environmental risk associated with co-formulants used in crop protection products. As a result, the next step was to um, develop waivers for use under reach relating to direct environmental exposure. And by that I mean the, uh, the soil and the aquatic exposure. We also concluded that a simple methodology is required for assessing human exposure via the environment and ideally secondary poisoning via the food chain for co-formulants. <coughs>